The reason it was called the bell boat is <coughs> the captain up in the wheelhouse would communicate to the engineer who stood here. This put together is called a telegraph. Okay. The captain would ring bell. This big one. Or this little one. And based on the code, this is up here, the engineer would know whether the captain wanted him to increase the speed or lower it. Go ahead, stop, go astern. And that was the way the captain communicated from up above to the engineer, to the engine. When it was taken out of service, uh, in an effort to make certain that she wouldn't go back into service, folks who had her, but we acquired her in 2005. She went out of service in 1993. They vandalized the engine. We have most of the parts we get a million bucks, somebody can help us put it back together. But this is it. When you go from yeah. forward to a stern, Good Good job. the engine has to be brought yeah. to a dead stop. Really you have to think about, the captain has to ring bells, and we call them bells and jingles, right. to the engineer to instruct him what to do. Think about parking a car. You put it in reverse and you go, Whoa. Captain has to think like eight moves ahead like a chess match. So get piston. And uh, somebody sees fit to give us a gift of a million bucks. Well, we'll put it back together again. Uh, the ship has become a training site for the Bridge Painters Union, the guys who paint bridges. Uh, so their apprentices, they come here with a crew of apprentices most every Tuesday and put in three, four hours. So a lot of the new paint that you're looking at and primer, this is primer, uh, is their work. And then we have a volunteer who's a, a retired engineer and uh, a guy who knows his way around boats. He's working on restoring the wheelhouse. Boat deck, because the lifeboats were here, that's one davit. We have two more and we need a fourth, because there was one here and one on the other side. So there are two very special things about the captain's cabin. He did have some privileges. He had his own toilet. <laughs> That's one. The other is, it's the only cabin that has portholes on all four sides. Because even when the captain is sleeping, he's not. It's the old, I sleep with one eye open. Right. Kind of thing. He's always on the job. Right. That chair and that desk, I don't think the desk is original. The chair certainly isn't. We have his captain's chair in the basement in Sheepshead Bay. Hmm. Those closets in marine parlance that they're called hanging lockers. So the left hand one is, is an original door, the right hand not. Hmm. Navigation today, GPS, all of that stuff. These guys navigated with a sextant and a compass and the stars and the sun the way it had been done for thousands of years. Right. Nothing changed until the last, whatever, 50 40, years. 50 years as it happened. The mid-60s, uh, they were required, all these ships were required to install radar. ALF had to go to school and get qualified for radar. Karen had a little Panasonic cassette recorder that he borrowed to take to the lectures. We have his notebooks, which we've given to the, to the ship. Now, we 
wheelhouse is in the process, as I said, of restoration. The windows are off and awaiting restoration. The windows went down into like a well. And over the years, a lot of rust got in there and stuff, so it's being repaired. Mm -hmm. But you remember I talked about the bells and the jingles, okay? In the wheelhouse, besides the wheel and the compass, there are a pair of poles on starboard side and port side. If the captain is out here and the mate's on the wheel, redundancy. He's got bells and jingle poles. And he's got another set on the outside. This is an original cheap rail. And it looked like hell. And now it's going on three years. Three years ago, we had a group of high school interns from the Williamsburg High School of Architecture and Design. And they worked for like eight weeks. This rail came off and they scraped and sanded and varnished. And in the course of their doing that work, we reached out via Facebook and all those other social to media me. to ask people about this rail. And one sailor who was on board as a very young seaman when Alf was captain wrote to us about how this rail was Alf's baby. And that he personally, even though he was the captain, he personally varnished this rail every year. I met him the year after he retired when I met Karen. This was 1979. And he had built a house up in Connecticut in the northeast corner and had seven acres, an orchard, and a little uh, vegetable garden that was probably a third of an acre and, and just wonderful. And he just became a landlubber. But it was beautiful. The land was beautiful. He built the house. And uh, he was the nicest guy. Sweet, soft-spoken gentleman. And on a couple of occasions when they come down to visit us, when John Alf was a wee one, I remember walking in Sheepshead Bay along Emmons Avenue. And on like two or three occasions, former crewmen would see him and salute him and say, Captain, hi. They were, yeah. It's really, uh, it's a really special story. But over the years after he retired, uh, she became too small for the demand. And now you see tugs pushing oil barges. One oil barge is 10 of these. So she would just be up and down the river and uh, fueling ships and things like that. And then after the Exxon Valdez, she was retired because she's single hull. Tank is now all have to be double, double hull. Right. He is the last of this boat in the U.S. There was one identical boat that was scrapped in Seattle which is where we got some of the parts. There was another almost identical, uh, a 30 foot longer version of this called the John B. Cadell. And when Sandy came along, Sandy picked her up and dumped her on shore and popped her over. So she ended up scrapped like three years ago, two years ago, she got scrapped. Scrapped her. So this ship is now on the National Register of Historic Places. Now, the reason this ship survived, she was on one of those finger piers over there, the other side of past the gantry cranes. And here's one pier, here's the other pier, this is about 200 feet across. But we were on the north side of this pier. Carolina and one other volunteer who's been with us over the years, Peter Rothenberg, is it? were on board. Carolina being smart enough to know what the hell's coming, okay, figured out how to secure the ship in terms of the lines. 
they ran lines from the bits on the port side. They pieced together hawsers like this because they had, you know, 12 hours notice in terms of knowing when the tide was going to be high. And trucked the lines along the shore to the far side so they had her secured from the far side as well. So when she went up, she draws seven feet. She went up 13 feet, but she didn't go over onto the shore because she was secure. And they wow. stayed on board through the whole storm. And she just went up and came back down. And that was that. We lost track of the Mary Whalen, who, you know, knew from the Mary Whalen. In 2006, Open House New York weekend. Right. Okay. So there's an article in the Bay News about the different things you can do on open house weekend and it listed you could go tour this retired tanker and if we were in the container port which is just over there with those gantry cranes and it had carolina's email address so i sent her an email which she tells me she saved and i said my name is john weaver and i'm coming on saturday to tour the ship and I'm bringing the captain's daughter. <laughs> now, I had, but at that time, I was already retired. And uh, we got here, nevertheless.